I'm hoping, I'm guessing that you will also receive the link to uh, your to the information to the questionnaire that you will receive afterwards. So what you are going to do is first you will register here. Uh, first name, last name, email, username, password, and uh, the name of your organization. I have already done this because I, I have a pre-filled profile here. So I'm going to use my username. And uh, this is the, the user interface. Okay. Uh, please keep in mind that uh, this is a minimum viable product. That means that we haven't focused uh, at all on user experience, unfortunately. Thank you very much for helping us uh, here. This is also something that we would like to hear your thoughts uh, about, how we can improve it. Uh, we, 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 what we've done is to focus on the functionalities and the scenarios that I uh, just presented. So here we have a dashboard. Uh, we have the summary of our organization, uh, things that have to do with the personal data protection, and then things that have to do with cybersecurity. And also we have the policy, recommendations, as well as the observatory. So the first thing that uh, we will do is to start uh, browsing the first use case, the first scenario, which is how do I enter my company data and how do I enter uh, information about the, the, the way that I process um, other people's data, the processing activities. So if I go to my organization, um, here we have the organization name uh, and, the, and the type, and the completeness of the profile, as well as the number of the processing activities that I have inserted. So if I go to basic data and I edit it, what I'm asked for is uh, the name of the organization, the sector, I can choose um, from uh, multiple uh, sectors, the country where it operates. We have the Euro European uh, countries here and uh, all of them, all of the rest are uh, listed as other and uh, also the size of the company. So micro, small, medium, and large. Uh, something uh, very important is that uh, you have this question mark here, and if you hover your mouse uh, on, over this uh, question mark, in every one of these fields, you will see some more information, which will hopefully uh, help you uh, understand what uh, this means, because some of this information, as you, as you will uh, probably find out later on, in GDPR is quite cryptic. So hopefully this will provide you with some extra information which will help you uh, decrypt it and also um, and, and uh, help you use the system. Uh, okay, so apart from basic data, I've got here contacts as well. Uh, these are the contact persons that are legally responsible for uh, um, handling personal data in the organization. And if I go here and edit one of them, you will see that I've got name, address, email, phone, and role in the company. Um, this is whether this is a data protection officer or, or just a responsible, a person responsible for this, uh, for the handling of data. And we also have uh, the assets profile here. Um, first of all, the question is whether the assets uh, that uh, are owned by you, so in, uh, for instance, in uh, servers, in uh, bare metal, as we call them, the computer scientists' um, uh, infrastructure, or whether you use a third party software as a service provider in order to um, to provide you with uh, these assets. So owned or not owned is the first question. The second one is whether the uh, software, these assets are deployed in our company premises or not, or in the cloud, or maybe both. We have assets, so we have windows on our machines in the company, and also we have uh, AWS as a cloud provider for hosting our website or some other operations. So. That, that is a hybrid model. Uh, regarding the infrastructure profile here, we have uh, a few uh, possible options. We have uh, owned virtual machines, we have networks, and perhaps we have some own servers and some business workstations or even business mobile devices that um, our company uses. In terms of the software profile, uh, again, we have uh, a few different uh, possible um, types of software that we might be using. So maybe authentication software or business operating systems, 
uh, remote access software, how uh, VPN, uh, virtual private networks, uh, and all of that. And finally, we need to fill in the cyber expertise level. So if the, the company representative was to rank their expertise in terms of cybersecurity and personal data protection, uh, how would you assess it? How the, would they assess it? We have three possible fields here, beginner, intermediate, and uh, expert. Okay, so after we're done with uh, the basic organization uh, data, uh, we can move to uh, data protection and then see that we have the processing activities in here. Here you can uh, add a, a processing activity. You can save it as draft as well, because as you will see, it consists of uh, seven uh, steps. So for each processing activity, it is a quite detailed uh, number of things that we are asking. Uh, sorry for the aspect ratio of my laptop here. It doesn't uh, look very nice here, I know. Uh, so for the time being, for this company, our legal uh, experts helped us uh, create two processing activities and uh, which they can serve as examples. Uh, the first one is uh, optimizing market for converting customers. So how do we improve our digital marketing audience and how do we handle the data of uh, the, the potential uh, customers and our audience. And the second one is, how do we fulfill a customer order? So how do we capture, save, consult the customer? And uh, so we have all this information about uh, their address and uh, shipping details, their uh, mobile phone. Uh, so again, this is probably something that uh, many SMEs do. So let's uh, start editing one of the two. Perhaps we can start with, uh, we can see what uh, we include in the fulfill customer order processing activity. And so as it says here, we use the links in the left in order to, to navigate. We, we may save the processing activity as draft when we want to and then resume afterwards. And there are, uh, when all of the seven information groups that we have here are fulfilled, we can save the processing activity uh, and then it, it will go to um, the, the record, to the record of processing activities. Okay, so the first tab we have identity and, and basic information. What's the name? You must give it a name in order to keep it in your records. Uh, fulfill customer order. Customer order is what we put here. Some details. Again, as you will see, there are some uh, question marks here, which uh, if you hover them, you will see some extra uh, tool tips that might help you fulfill all this information. Uh, what is the, the, the role of uh, the organization in terms of GDPR? So wh whether it is the controller of the data, the processor of the data, or uh, what is called uh, the joint controller. What is the release date of the uh, data? When was it? first released, when was it first, so when was this information uh, first captured by, um, by you? And what is the responsible, the person responsible for this data? So here you should choose, and the system will let you choose from the responsible uh, people that you uh, declared beforehand in the basic organization data. Next, we have the, the purpose of uh, processing. So, why are we using this data in these processing activities? Why are we processing them? So this is um, a free text purpose that you may put here, that you might, might want to put here. And the primary purpose, uh, the category of the primary purpose is it human resources, business, marketing, research and development, or others. And then here you can also uh, include in free text some secondary purposes. And here is the uh, lawful basis for uh, processing. Again, a GDPR uh, requirement. So concept, contract, is it because of compliance? Is it because of public interest or the legitimate interests of the controller? This is uh, us, the controller in this case. So this is what we've selected uh, for uh, this processing activity. Uh, then we declare the subject of the processing, the subjects of the processing activity. So which are the persons uh, that are actually uh, whose uh, data, personal data, are being handled in these processing activities. 
Uh, and the aim here is also to identify some vulnerable or, or sensitive uh, data subjects. This is a description in free text, and then we have uh, categories. Uh, so you, it might be children, it might be uh, patients, customers, citizens, and uh, a few more things. So apart from the subjects now, we go to, to the data itself that is being uh, processed. A short description. The categories of the data, the personal data, a few more categories here as you will see. So location, connection, family information, name, address, phone, and email. Um, now, in, in this field, we need to identify whether there are uh, categories, some, sp uh, some special categories of data that we might be handling, such as data re revealing racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, um, religious or philosophical beliefs, genetic data, uh, all these things that are quite uh, sensitive. And here we fill in uh, the, retention, the retention period of the data. For how long are we going to be uh, keeping them? And this is uh, happening in, in months. So this data will be held here for 36 months. Um, then, so we have the basic information, the purpose of, of doing it, who is involved as a subject, the data that we're handling itself, and then we have the recipients. So who is going to, um, to receive this data? And here we provide a name, fulfillment department, which will handle the, the order. This uh, data is collected by uh, the data subjects or the customers. This is the type of data that has been collected, and then we send it over to the fulfillment department in order to send the actual uh, order that the client has made. Uh, and uh, here's the, the type of the recipient. So whether it, this is an internal uh, department in the same organization, but it might be a partner of ours, commercial partner, or it also might be uh, a recipient outside the European Union, which obviously then increases the risk and changes the way that the data uh, should be handled by uh, GDPR. Then we have uh, some uh, additional privacy risk criteria that uh, might be uh, identified here. So for instance, whether we systematically monitor um, this uh, data, uh, we, we might be trying to match or combine data sets together. With, uh, some other company might be uh, also collected data about the same person. And then when we try to match these two uh, persons and uh, combine them, combine the data in, in order to get information regarding, for instance, their preferences, their shopping preferences and all that, this is again something that poses uh, a privacy risk and this needs to, um, uh, to be known in the record of processing activities. And, and to be known in order to make an assessment regarding how compliant with the GDPR regulations we are. And finally, the last thing that we uh, declare is what type of measures does the company take in order to increase the privacy uh, and cybersecurity of this processing activity. So here we have a number of uh, organizational uh, measure categories, and uh, then we have some technical uh, measures again, categorized. There are 10 categories for each. For instance, uh, here we, uh, the first category is regarding whether we uh, define and enforce a specific policy in order to handle this data. And then we declare whether we have a cybersecurity and personal data protection policy in place in our company. So we know what we're doing with this. Uh, this, this has a reference which policy might be also reviewed and revised annually or not. There is also a privacy uh, policy. We have the roles and responsibilities of the processors and of the controllers well-defined uh, within our company and uh, which uh, dictate this specific processing activity. Uh, in terms of our roles and possibilities here, we have some more information. How do we uh, uh, control the access of uh, other individuals or entities to uh, to the to to our data, whether the, whether there is a policy in place or not. Um, so different kinds of uh, measures that you might have 
put in place already in the company. And also we have uh, technical measures again. And after we are uh, all done with this, we can submit this and we can save the processing activity. And this, again, when we have a, uh, this, uh, this list can be considered the record of processing activities. And uh, one of the ambitions of Sentinel is to uh, help users uh, have an auditable and uh, record of processing activities in order for, uh, to, to, to prove their compliance with the GDPR regulations. And this summarizes the first use case. Now, if I go a bit further and move to the second use case, which was the self-assessment. So assessments on how do I, uh, on, on, the, on the processes that I have in place uh, in order to handle personal data and also the processes and the measures that I've taken in order to um, ensure that uh, the data uh, is uh, secure. Uh, Sentinel aims to provide so aims to provide some uh, assessments. One of them is uh, the GDPR compliance assessment. So as you can see here, we have a, a, a link here. Uh, GDPRC, it's called GDPR compliance. Uh, that holds for, stands for GDPR compliance, and also another one for data protection and impact assessment. Uh, if I click on this button, as you will see, there are links for each, one link for each uh, processing activity. So the assessment is made per processing activity uh, right now. So if I click on uh, this button, uh, and the system will ask me whether I want to, to perform a compliance assessment for this processing activity. And uh, a few seconds, yes, a few seconds later, uh, the processing activity has been assessed. Now, if I go to uh, this uh, magnifier class, uh, I can see some a summary of the processing activity. So here we have the, the purpose, the data subjects, the data, the recipients. So all these are the categories that uh, we uh, filled in before. And, and you will see uh, the answers. And also when it was released and the purpose uh, and a few more uh, data here. But also, what we have here is also the, the GDPR compliance of this activity. Now, GDPR compliance is based on four different things. How do we manage our records? How do we manage our processing uh, uh, data? Uh, how do we keep record of how we manage the processing data actually? And this is what the system assesses for now. And there are three more things, how, uh, what is, uh, how do we manage the life cycle of uh, personal data? How do we manage the individual rights on their data? So do we let uh, customers um, uh, delete their data, ask for, for us to completely delete? So this is the, the right to, to be for, for, uh, forgotten. Do we do that? Do we um, provide with uh, the client with all the data that we have about them? So these are all legal requirements from GDPR and the GDPR compliance, compliance assessment tool uh, will eventually also be uh, evaluating processing activities uh, in terms of, uh, of these two. And also, how the, do we, the, uh, do we, does the, the company manages the consent? that uh, a customer gives us, the actually the subject of the data uh, gives us here. But again, only the first one for now is something that, uh, what it, uh, that is being assessed uh, for the time being. Uh, in the, by the end of the year, we're hoping, we're planning actually, we're quite, quite confident that the rest will also be there in place. And the system provides you with uh, three uh, levels of uh, compliance, largely compliant, compliant or not compliant at all uh, for now. Um, and you can see this information here. And also, apart from that, we also have uh, an assessment of uh, the risk, uh, of the impact. Uh, if uh, uh, in an event where the data might be exposed to third parties, which is performed by the DPIA uh, module, 
as here you will see that uh, the risk is low. It might be low, medium, or high. And this assessment uh, is uh, made based on, uh, I don't remember how many they are, I think 13 or 17, probably 17 uh, questions here, uh, which uh, have to be answered again explicitly for, uh, for the processing activity. Uh, and once I submit it, uh, in a few seconds again, I will receive the, the assessment and I will have it uh, available to be uh, seen in the, in the processing activity. Uh, so this holds, this was the part where the data protection, the protection of personal data, how we handle, it, we handle it as a company is being assessed. And the second thing that uh, we also uh, uh, want to do by the end of the project is to help the company uh, have an assessment of uh, their cybersecurity assets and infrastructure, like I said. So for that matter, we have two tools, the simulation environment and the uh, Airbus Cyber Range tool. This is unfortunately something that, that uh, is not uh, currently available for this uh, demonstration. We will not ask you to, uh, to, to use it. It's not available because uh, it entails quite a lot of effort from the company in order to create a virtual machine that will simulate exactly the infrastructure and it will be sent to our server, which will then create all this profile. It's a bit laborsome. It's uh, extremely detailed and uh, I think it's very nice, but it uh, requires, requires significant effort and it also requires uh, quite a high uh, knowledge of uh, how computers work or how this infrastructure is there. So the, the tool that it is available right now is, um, is this, the cybersecurity simulation environment. What it does, it's, it's very simple for now. What it does is that um, you can enter some uh, information here. So I can, I, can, I can select a vendor, I can select a product, and I can select a version of the, of the, of the product. And um, I don't know what I should, uh, should go for. I don't, I don't really remember. So th this is a huge list of millions of, uh, of uh, pro uh, products and uh, assets uh, and vendors. I don't really remember which ones are um, really make sense right now. So I will. I'm afraid I will skip this part. I'm sorry about this. This is uh, just a demo. But what it uh, what it does is again for uh, uh, it, uh, intended for people that are uh, quite uh, proficient in their uh, cybersecurity knowledge is that it provides a list of uh, threats, a list of uh, vulnerabilities, and it combines them in order to create attack scenarios. I will go through my notes later on, and I will uh, perhaps. Uh, come back with a demonstration of this. So again, apologies for this, but I'm, uh, I'm hoping that you will uh, find, uh, let, me, let me try again, let me try once more. Maybe with a version of Windows, I will try. For some reason, it doesn't work. Perhaps there might be some problem with, uh, with the tool. But in any case, I, I will come back to this later. So sorry about that. Again, this is a very, very initial version of the product. So that was it about regarding self-assessments, processing activities, cybersecurity, uh, and cybersecurity assessments. And uh, the next thing that uh, the system uh, does is that it provides policy recommendations. So if, I, if I've if i never uh, acquired a recommendation from the system, it will, uh, the first time that I log in here, I will see a big window that will, it will ask me to uh, click the button so that uh, it processes all the data about processing activities 
and uh, the data that I put in my profile in order to get some recommendation. Uh, and here we have a, a summary of uh, the recommendations uh, plus the, all the assessments that we've executed. So uh, again, the, the information that of the company. Uh, now for each processing activities, we have the compliance in terms of GDPR, in, in terms of the four different axes that I mentioned before, only this one is uh, functioning now. The rest are actually uh, random, randomly generated, but uh, in the next few months, uh, they will be in, put in place. And again, uh, here we have per processing activity. We have two processing activities. For each one of them, uh, we have the risk level, and then two more factors that are going to be implemented later on. And finally, uh, we also have assessments regarding the compliance of the organization as a whole, not, not per processing activity. This is also provided by the GDPR compliance assessment tool, but for the time being, these two numbers, these two uh, indicators here, the colors are uh, randomly generated too. Again, this is something that we uh, expect to be there by uh, the next couple of months. Uh, when the first full featured uh, release will be um, released. Okay, and apart from the assessments, we also have recommendations. And the recommendations, what we mean by recommendations is uh, organizational measures and technical measures that, be, that uh, are uh, to be put in place by the company. So what do we recommend you to do in terms of organizational or uh, technical activities in order to uh, safeguard the, your cybersecurity assets as well as the uh, personal data that you uh, handle. Uh, so here you will see that in terms of defining and enforcing a policy, the system uh, recommends us to have an annual review process for, of the cybersecurity and data protection policies with uh, so each one of the measures uh, has also some uh, short description and um, also uh, policies for information security data protection that needs to be defined and approved by the management. And apart from this, we also have some software and some tools. So the idea is that here we will enrich the platform with as many uh, software uh, plugins that might help the company in terms of both organization and uh, technical activities in order to uh, to achieve compliance and also to be as secure as possible. Uh, so the plan is to integrate uh, tools provided by the company, uh, by the, the project partners, as well as open source tools uh, for each one of these categories. And here you, you get some recommendations. Uh, for the time being, uh, this is a, this, these recommendations are limited to the tools that are to be uh, provided by the project partners. But again, this is an ongoing activity. We are enriching this database and uh, in the next uh, months, we are going to be uh, providing more tools. So yes, this is, this is it pretty much. As you can see here, more uh, measures regarding the company, as well as some measures regarding specific processing activities. So you will see that, for instance, uh, this organizational measure, uh, enforcement of documented personal data, is uh, applicable for this specific processing activity, the payroll processing, not the other one, uh, which was uh, with regard to marketing and advertising and uh, converting uh, customers. Uh, and again, some tools that uh, we think that might help the user do this. And finally, thank you for bearing with me so long. We have the observatory use case. Here, what we do, again, this is a very, very uh, basic and uh, uh, a very, very basic version of uh, what uh, the final product would, will look like. What we have is uh, a connection with uh, a platform that uh, gathers and collects uh, cybersecurity threats regarding 
that, that are uh, happening uh, and uh, outside. So maybe there are some uh, zero day uh, exploits as we call them, or there are some exposures of personal data leaks uh, or systems being hacked out in the outside world. NISP is a platform, an external platform to Sentinel that tries to collect all the to collect all this information and we connect with that platform and we get this data in real time. We've, we've chosen uh, a couple of uh, categories uh, uh, for for now. Uh, only uh, here you will only see seven of, of uh, these uh, uh, alerts of, of this data and uh, uh, of, uh, excuse me, of the categories, and uh, here you will see some more information uh, regarding all these uh, uh, the, the events that uh, these categories refer to. Again, this is also, I recognize it's a bit technical, uh, perhaps uh, more proficient uh, uh, people in the company uh, are going to be helped uh, by this, uh, but we are planning to make it. So this is just to give you a general taste of what we are um, hoping to do next. And perhaps uh, you will uh, provide us with any thoughts or suggestions which will be more than welcome. 